Hello friends, we all know what this line means. Its ups and downs are reflective of the various situations in our life, or rather our life itself. The blood is continuously flowing through our arteries and veins, supplying nutrients to various organs and fighting off invaders. The earth has been spinning since time immemorial, creating what we call day and night. But do you know what all these events have in common? They are in a state of movement or motion. Have you ever imagined what would happen if the aspect of movement was removed from these events? That is, if things stopped moving? The consequences are unimaginable. Even if we are faced with a traumatic event, we are told to leave the past behind and move on. These examples are few of many that serve to prove the phrase, movement is life. The different types of motion in all scenarios are studied by physics. To better understand this, let us take a walk in the park. While in the park, we see a lot of people doing various activities like walking, running, playing, cycling, etc. But what are all these people actually doing? And what do all their activities have in common? Well, they are moving or they are said to be in motion. But what is this motion? We have all heard the phrase, time and tide waits for none. The part of the phrase which says, waits for none, indicates that for us to be regular, we have to do things on time. In other words, we have to move with time. This movement with time is called motion. If we pay a little more attention, we will realize that the phrase is also a comparison of ourselves to time. Thus, for a body to be in motion, it has to be compared to or related to something. Hence, when we see anything moving, we say that it's in motion. And if it's not moving, then we usually say that it's not in motion or stationary. But when we call things stationary, are they really stationary? These stationary objects are along with us on Earth. And as we all know, our Earth is not only rotating about its axis, but also revolving around the Sun. So isn't the Earth in motion 24-7? Yes, it is. And technically, if the Earth is in motion, then anything on it, including you, me, and all those stationary objects are also in motion. So even if these so-called stationary objects are moving, why do they appear stationary to us? Well, just like in life, the philosophy in physics too is the same. It's all about perspective, the way you look at things. If we consider stationary objects on Earth, then from our perspective, these objects do not change their position. Because we too are on Earth with these objects. However, if we were astronauts and we were to view these same objects from space, then from our perspective, these objects would appear to change their position and now seem to be moving. This perspective position or relative position of an object is called inertial frame of reference. So what we are trying to get at through all this is the fact that the feeling of things moving and being stationary is because motion is relative. So now let's keep in mind that this concept of motion is not limited to objects on Earth alone, but also objects beyond it, like the solar system and galaxies in space. Let's understand this with the situation. Imagine you and your friend are sitting in a car which is moving. You will notice that your friend is still or not moving but everything outside the car window is moving behind like this man here but if you see the same situation from the man's perspective then you would notice that it's the car that's moving and with it both you and your friend this funny feeling is because as mentioned earlier motion is relative now let's be a bit observant though objects in the park are in motion either directly or indirectly we notice not all motion of people or objects are the same so now, let's understand the different types of motion involved. In this situation, we can see that the person is jogging on a straight road. This type of motion which occurs along a straight line is known as rectilinear motion. Light from the sun, light bulbs and stars always travels along a straight line and hence is the best example of rectilinear motion. Now, if we consider children playing with the ball, we see that when they throw the ball in air, it does not travel along a straight line but rather takes a curved path. This type of motion is known as curvilinear motion, in which a body travels along a curved path. 
Can you recognize any other activities in your day-to-day -day life which involves curvilinear motion? The game of cricket is a good example. When we bat for a six, we notice that the ball follows a curved path as it crosses the boundary. Now that we know what rectilinear and curvilinear motion is, let's look at the scenario of a race and see what we can learn from this scenario. Here we see that there are kids participating in a race. At the end of the race, we see that there is a tie between three kids. The reason for the tie was because all three kids took the same amount of time to complete the race. The distance covered is also the same as it's a fair race. Thus, we can conclude that all three kids took the same time to cover an equal distance. This type of motion where bodies take an equal amount of time to cover equal distance is known as translatory motion. While looking at the cycles and the car, we see that the tires are moving and their motion is along an axis. Such a motion is called rotatory motion or rotational motion and sometimes also mentioned as circular motion. Other examples of circular motion are the merry-go-round and spinning tops in which both the objects spin around a particular axis which is at the center. Now if we look at another bunch of kids who are swinging, we see that they are moving back and forth from a particular point, the center. This repeated motion of a swing going back and forth is known as oscillatory motion. Where else can we see oscillatory motion? We can see such motion in the pendulums of clocks, such as the grandfather's clock. If the rate of oscillation increases rapidly, then this motion now becomes vibratory motion. Examples of vibratory motion are musical instruments such as the guitar, violin, drums, etc. Another type of motion is periodic motion. As the name suggests, when a body repeats its motion after regular or constant intervals of time, it is known as periodic motion. Examples include the hands of the clock, earth revolving around the sun and the Halley's Comet which is seen only once in 76 years. Periodic motion can also be known as uniform motion because the movement is done in equal interval of time with constant speed. For example, if a man covers a constant length of 10 meters for every minute, then at the end of 10 minutes he would have covered a total distance of 100 meters. This is known as uniform motion. As long as this condition is fulfilled, the concept of uniform motion can in fact be applied to other types of motion as well. So if this type of motion is carried out in a circular path, then it is known as uniform circular motion. But what if the man is not covering a constant length in equal interval of time? Say that at times he walks slowly, taking more time, and sometimes he walks fast, taking comparatively a lesser time then these fluctuations or variations decrease the uniformity of motion and hence is known as non-uniform motion. This concept too can be applied to other types of motion. So what happens if this is carried out in a circular path? We get non-uniform circular motion. Simple, isn't it? So in this session we saw how important and involved motion is in our life that the concept of motion only comes into effect upon comparison of one body to another body, that motion is also of many different types. We hope that this session has been informative while arousing your interest to know more about the topic in our subsequent videos, which deal with the various terms and other aspects of motion. Until next time, keep watching, keep learning and follow your curiosity.